YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists, welcome to this week's episode of P&Q. And yeah, I'm cold, so I'm wearing a hat. Woody hat, because it's cold. Horrible, miserable day here in uh, Plymouth in England. Horrible. So, don't know where the summer's gone, I think summer out is it now. But, um, I would like to think it would be cool if we could have another heat wave. Or any really, people say we've had heat waves, or like they'll say, "Oh, we're in for a heat wave middle of this month or whatever." Have you noticed this? Uh, to me, uh, going back to when I was a child in the seventies, those were heat waves, and they lasted longer than a couple of days. That's a heat wave. Standpipes, all that. That's proper heat wave. Hosepipe, man. Yeah. Don't get. Don't really gonna get that here now. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that chit chat, this is P&Q, the question and answer series where you get to ask me questions or put comments to me, then I respond the following week. Do this one of four ways, put your comment or question down below, easy enough. Uh, email me directly at miniwarzone at gmail.com, there'll be a link in the video description below. That'll give you an anonymous response, hey, I know it. Um, or, if you like, you can ask a question in a series of your own or a video of your own, like a question, video question, I call them video questions. Uh, and then I'll use that here if I see it or think it's a cool question, whatever. Um, or if you meet me in person, you can ask me a question there. And if I think, yeah, okay, I'll I'll put that on the the, the episode and answer it there as well. Um, I don't have any emails this week and I haven't bumped into anybody. So <laughs> I've got two video questions and then the questions uh, from last week's episode. So we'll get on with that. Now we'll start with the video questions. Um, starting with Black Country uh, Wargamer on his Ask My Audience series, which he's bringing back. So yeah, if you want a, uh, a question from Black Country Wargamer, go over to his channel, check out his channel, and um, then answer it. Uh, so um, he said. If wargaming, board gaming, and computer gaming didn't exist or were outlawed, what hobby do you think you would be doing? Now that is a good question. That's a very good question. What hobby do I think I would be doing? Um, probably, because you didn't say uh, role playing. Uh, probably I'd be role playing, which still involves models. I'd probably end up collecting stuff. Um, I'd probably collect um, models and, and cool stuff like that, memorabilia. I probably wouldn't be building them, like scale model building or anything, uh, although that's a great hobby. Uh, but I probably wouldn't have um, discovered it. So, But I, I, I'm a bit of a collector at heart. It's only really the Warhammer, uh, the whole Warhammer thing which got me into hobbying in terms of building and painting and stuff. So I do owe it many thanks in that respect. But I, I think I would be role playing and probably getting miniatures and um, painting miniatures to role play. Um, but obviously you wouldn't need many figures for role playing. I don't need like, you know, I'd probably have a dozen figures maximum, um, uh, or maybe two dozen, I'll say two dozen, I'd have a dozen like different characters and things and then, depending on what type of role playing game it was, because you always need like, um, um, NPGs and, uh, uh, NPCs, sorry, NPCs and, and things like that in your world, don't you, to, to populate like your little area, little tabletop make-believe village, whatever it is you are. So that's, I would probably expand upon that and do that. So yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to go for um, uh, RPGs, role-playing games. But failing that, if no games whatsoever, then it'd be collecting stuff. Cool stuff, nerdy stuff. Great question. I love that question, that's good, because that got me thinking about, it's kind of the stuff I used to do before I got into the hobby anyway. I mean, I, I was kind of out of video games anyway at that point, so, so yeah. 
Right, thank you for your question, uh, Carl, that was great. Okay, the next video question comes from Green Stuff Games, Thursday Q&A. The question is, if painting is your means of relaxing, what do you do when painting starts to stress you out? When painting starts to stress me out. It doesn't st uh, stress me out. Um, I don't know, I never seem to have enough time um, in the day to 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 do it but let's suppose it did <laughs> other things I do do when I don't paint I, I'd go to reading that's what I would do next I'd go to reading if painting was stressing me out but um, yeah um, and then when I've either I've had enough of that or I can't do that any any longer I move to watching YouTube videos so that's kind of my free vices really painting and playing um, reading and then um, watching videos on YouTube so yeah that's cool so that's what I do but I have to say painting does not stress me out quite the opposite I've never got to the stage I'm like oh I just don't want to paint anymore never never got to that stage hope I never do thank you for your question uh, Joe that's great Right, we're on to the um, comments that were left from last week. So I can sip my tea yet. Oh. And the first comment I got here is from Crew Angela Silicus. That's just how I pronounce your name. To anybody wondering, uh, you know, that's just the way I pronounce um, Mike's channel name. Crew Angela Silicus. He says. Great P&Q, Pete. How do you stay motivated to do a weekly P&Q and put out so much content? Because I love it. I love doing it. And it's a part of what I consider to be a part of my hobby. And my hobby takes my mind off of my condition, my MS, and my aches and pains, and all the other bits and pieces that go along with it. it takes my mind off it. Uh, any other woes and worries I may have from life just gone when I'm doing my hobby this here and what's in front of me that's my world this place the camera uh, whatever episode I'm working on whatever work needs to go into to um, be done to, to be produced for that episode that's my world and it focuses me and helps me to focus um, I, I believe it helps me. Um, so I like being, I like feeling as normal as I can be, whatever that is. And so doing this makes me feel good. So that's why I do it. That's my motivation, the feel good factor. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I'm just going to put my collars down. This is my old painting cardigan. It doesn't even have a zip anymore. Mrs. Minnie Orzone hates it. Uh, can't go out with that on. Uh, it's a bit chilly today, so I, I'm wrapping up. It will soon be time to exchange my fan for my heater. Uh, that's not something I'm looking forward to, I hasten to add. I like it. Hot, sunny day. Windows open, door open, fan on. That was beautiful. Loved that. Come back those days. Come back. All right. Next up, we've got Tabletop Warzone. It says, Nice P&Q, Pete. Always lovely to listen to these when modelling slash painting. Are you going to any conventions this year or next? And what is the biggest motivator to go to these conventions for you? Keep up the amazing work. Thank you for your excellent question. Am I going to any conventions this year or next? I might be going to Salute next year. I haven't fully made up my mind yet, but I'm considering it. I didn't bother this year. I, I had a bit of a uh, like a bit of a mad experience the year before, and it kind of put me off this year. Uh, my biggest problem with it is, um, I see I didn't go to salute this year, but because of that, I was able to buy the Dark Imperium box set and, and loads of other bits and pieces to go with it because I didn't spend out on you know the travel and everything else. 
I can, I, I think to myself, you know, it's cost me, what, 50, 60 quid to get there by train. I could spend that on toys, you know, and other goodies and loads of goodness. But then I don't meet people, which is something I enjoy doing. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, toying with the idea of going, it is a good experience overall, I think. A tiring but good experience. It's a very long day for me. Starting really early. Ending really late. Oh. But I may do. The biggest motivator to go to them, I suppose, is, I don't know, just to soak up the atmosphere, I suppose. Um, yeah, to, to soak up the atmosphere. The first one I ever went to, I was just overwhelmed by it all a bit. Uh, the first salute I went to, because the first convention I went to was there's more of a local one here in Plymouth. Sorry, I'm quite to sort these collars out of the my head. Yeah, the first one I went to was more of a local one here in Plymouth. Um, and that was what I, th I thought was quite big. But then I went to salute, I thought, wow, that's even bigger, you know. Um, I was hoping to kind of get the lowdown on new stuff and new games and maybe get discounts. That doesn't seem to be the case with conventions. Uh, you've got to fight to get to like a stall or anything because it's just so ram packed with people. And you don't really get anything in the way of discounts. I mean, like, unless you've got like a silver tongue or whatever and you could talk the vendor into giving you a discount. But other than that, it's no, I see no real benefit financially of going to a convention other than just seeing a load of stuff all in one place it's difficult to it's difficult to talk uh, because you've got the, the, the crowds and everything else but like I say I do like meeting people so I would s suppose going soaking up the atmosphere and meeting people would be the biggest motivator to go to them other than that I don't see a real benefit but you know that's just me being a stick in the mud but, saying that, I may go to sleep next year. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, moving on. Thank you for your question. We have Drake's War Channel next. He says, thanks for your reply last time, Pete. I have not heard of the drink you described. What drink was that? Ribena? I forgot the question even. Though. I hope to try it in the future. I will ask this question. Can you tell us any stories regarding your family during World War II? Um, my family in World War II? Well, not really like stories that are good to listen to, I suppose. Um, my, my mother and her you know, other siblings were evacuated in World War Two, like so many children, um, out into the you know the country. Um, and they had a bit of a tough time, but you know they adapted. My father can remember. Well, he's dead now. He's been dead a, a long time, but I can remember him telling me when he was a kid. He first heard that they had on the radio. This like news report that uh, World War Two has broken out, and being a kid, they were all like, "Yeah," you know, like um, didn't realise the consequence of what what they were doing um, and what was to come. But being boys, little boys, uh, they were like, "Yes, let's go to war," you know. But I can, you know, I tell you stories. My father grew up on a farm before he went away to join the navy. Um, I used to have um, fireworks, you know, on the farm, like a homemade firework display. And they kept them in this barn, excuse me. <coughs> I remember Tammy one day, on one sunny day when they were stockpiling these uh, fireworks. I don't, doesn't know how it started, but like a spark or something got into these fireworks. And the whole barn went up. He thought it was amazing, you know. All these fireworks going off left, right and centre. Animals going nuts, like you know, like running for cover. But um, no, um, I mean, my 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 mother, she lost her father during the war. Um, 
during a bombing raid. Um, I can't really tell you any stories specifically related to the war, though um, I suppose I should be able to. To my shame, I don't. I don't really have any to tell you. That's not to say there aren't any. Being a typical child, whenever I, you know, I would hear about oh, during the war, I, I, my, my eyes would roll and I would close my ears off. But now I'm older and wiser, I think, actually I would have loved to have had those stories and um, tales that you had, you know, whoever it might have been. Oh dear. My grandfather was in the RAF. I can't really tell you much. Um, in the way of it. I can't think. No, I can't I can't think of anything. Um I did, not that I know of, so that's a bit of a disappointing answer for you, although I'm aware of that. And I apologize. I I should know I should be more um up on my like family history and and know that. But uh, there you go. Um, all I do know is, and I thoroughly know, World War Two was um, pretty hard on everyone concerned. Uh, my mum hates fireworks to this day. Anything to do with bangs or things like that. She still thinks it's like an air raid or something. You know, she still gets that knot in her stomach like, and things. Thunderstorms and things like that. So... You know, it does, it has a la long-lasting effect. But, um, yeah, sorry, I don't have any specific stories to tell. Okay, so moving on to Frost and Fists, who says, Great video is always my friend. I agree. These shows do feel like we're continuously getting to know each other better. It's a shame I didn't get my video up in time with the computer troubles last week. Take care, Pete. Wolf Brother Mephos. Well, I hope your computer troubles sort themselves out um, soon, my friend. Nothing worse is there than having problems with your computer in our in our um, first world. <laughs> it's um, I un I understand fully. Computers are either your best friend or your worst enemy. And that's true, very true. So um, yeah, I hope you get back into it soon. All right, Eric. Beer 40k is next. He says, Nice answers, Pete. I remember when you could take a hive note for Gaunt's. It was like a sergeant in some ways. So I suppose back in the older days they, they had something, but mm, I just wish they'd had, they'd have more. What is your next upgrade for the channel? My next upgrade for the channel. Hmm difficult to say exactly. I guess in some ways I would like to get better lighting, uh, lighting rig. Uh, and I would like to get uh, another camera, because I think that two cameras could do lots for my channel. Um, it probably, I'd probably just get another one like as a spare, but um, yeah, so like a, an extra camera and better lighting. That's probably what I would go for, for my channel. And during that time, I'll look out for any extra software that may help me with my editing and different things. I mean, I'm delving into green screen here and there. As you know, I kind of dip my toes in it. And I'm just kind of scratching the surface with what you can do with that. And it's a lot of work, but it's quite rewarding uh, doing it. So, I suppose a pot of green paint, because I would probably paint one wall of my studio green to save me setting up uh, the green uh, screen backdrop on the um, the tripods and everything. Because that's more of a like a mobile uh, green screen where you can go anywhere and set up, but it does take time to set up. And that. so me being quite you know uh, lazy-ish. Um, uh, I could have it there behind me already and I'm ready to go. <laughs> so that would probably 
be something as well. I mean, paint's not cheap, is it? 20, 30 quid a pot. Um, I'd probably need about 30 quid to have a paint just to paint the small area of the wall that I would need for that. But, you know, that said, that's a small thing. Um, so, yeah. Paint, camera, lighting. That'll be it. Thank you for your question, Mr. Idik BR, 40k. And the last question comes from JS Idaho. It says, Good morning from across the pond, Pete. Good morning. Concerning the Primaris, do you think they will release Terminators or is that the role of the new aggressors? No, I think they'll release Terminators. Um, to get some extra bunts, but I think they'll release Terminators uh, eventually. Um, yes, I do. I think the aggressors are just. Um, I'll dare, dare I say, I think it's more of an intermediary um, unit. I think the primary Terminators will probably be akin to maybe three wounds or something like that and be just a little bit better than the current Terminators now they've kind of upped their stats but yes that's what I think I do think they will have their own Terminators anyway there you go that's the last question that's all I've got time for not all I've got time for but all the questions I've got so I can't really ramble on any longer thank you so much please like share this video and subscribe hit that subscribe button hit that like button and uh, yeah, like a lot of people say on their channels, hit the bell for the notifications um, button there if you want to be notified of new videos because you may know I put a lot of videos out. I do put a lot of videos out and that way you'll get to know and you can decide whether you want to watch them or not. But yeah, but please like, share, subscribe and get the video out there. Spread the goodness. Uh, that is YouTube uh, and um, keep the questions coming uh, because without questions I can't do them and I've not missed a beat since I started doing them uh, yet hopefully that will continue that trend will continue for some time to come um, but yes so all that remains for me to say is remember all brushes lead to war and bye for now bye bye